What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross, I like games, and today we're continuing our look at the Transformers TCG, but what we need to do is answer a question that a lot of people have been asking. How do you build a deck? How do you actually go about building a deck for the Transformers trading card game? And I thought, you know what? I've done a ridiculous amount of research into the game, and I kind of know my stuff at this point, so I thought, you know what? I think I should be the kind of person to bring this video. Plus, I have made a how to play video and that's pretty good, but I think this is the logical extension. One thing to point out at the beginning here, there's no perfect way to build a deck. It's going to depend on what you're doing, which characters you're playing, etc. So do please bear in mind that decks will be radically different depending on what deck they are. This is intended to be a general guide to help you get started. So first things first, you need to pick your characters. You've got characters, they're the big cards. You've got battle cards, they're the little cards. You don't start with battle cards, you start with character cards. And you can have character cards as many as you like or as few as you like, up to a maximum cost of 25 stars. So if we have a quick look at Nemesis Prime here, we can see that actually this is a very expensive card. It actually costs 12 stars, which is pretty much half of your deck. If you compare that to something like RC, for instance, which is one of the cheapest cards, that only costs 5 stars. Now, in the future, it will be possible, we would assume, to have a 5 Transformer deck. As it is at the moment, there are only 3 Transformers that have a cost of 5, so you cannot make a deck with 5 characters, it's 2 to 4. Now, in terms of which characters you're allowed, there are only 2 restrictions. Maximum cost of 25, like I've said, and you cannot have 2 of the same card. Now, there are 3 Bumblebee cards, and what's awesome is they all actually add up to 25, so you could play an all Bumblebee deck, but you could not have more than one Bumblebee Legendary Warrior, more than one Bumblebee Courageous Scout. You can have as many Bumblebee as you like, as long as they are different Bumblebee. So in terms of the characters here, we're looking for synergy. Now, this could be in terms of skill. So if we look at something like Nemesis Prime, that's got a really nice skill. When you shuffle your scrap pile into your deck, you put a card under him and he gets plus three attack. Essentially, when you run out of battle cards, you shuffle your scrap pile and it becomes your deck. So if you're building a Nemesis Prime deck, you want to run out of your deck as fast as you can. So a skill like Autobot Cosmos, when you flip to this mode, scrap your hand and draw that many cards, that is going to help you draw through your deck really, really fast. So you've got a card that wants to draw through your deck really fast, and a card that lets you draw through your deck really fast. Or we've got a character like Decepticon Shockwave, which puts one damage counter on one of your Transformers every time you scrap a card from your hand. So what you can do here is play Inferno Fearless Firefighter, which makes your opponent pick up all of their upgrades and put them into their hand. And then you combine that with Security Checkpoint, which makes them discard all of the upgrades in their hand. Basically, you make them pick it up of Inferno Fearless Firefighter, make them discard them with Security Checkpoint, and Decepticon Shockwave then does a bunch of damage. But you can also make a deck that is themed around particular types of Transformer. So you could build a Dinobots deck, and generally people tend to go Grimlock, Sludge, and Snarl. Or you could build an Insecticon deck. People generally go Barrage, Chop Shop, Scrapnel, and Ransack. Or you could build a Cars deck. My personal favourite here is Prowl, Bumblebee Legendary Warrior, and Mirage, although there is a lot more leeway here. Dinobots and Insecticons, people think they found the best ones. Cars, there is a lot more leeway in terms of what you actually use. But once again, we're looking for synergy. So if we take Dino Chomp, Dino Chomp is a great card, which only works for Dinobots. What you do is you scrap your hand and one of your Dinobots gets bold five until the end of the turn. That is, you flip five more cards when attacking. If you're unsure of the rules of the game, I popped a link in the description. Do please check out my video on how to play, which should help you out quite nicely. But then you have zero cards in hand and that's a little bit awkward. So what you do here is you use Dinobot Snarl and Dinobot Snarl has a great great little skill whereby if you flip 
it over into alt mode and you've got no cards in hand, you draw two cards. A lot of these, like Dinobots, are designed to be played together. So what you want is a group of characters that either work well together despite having no connection or are themed because as we're going to see in a minute battle cards often fit with these themes now i mentioned about the bumblebee deck earlier but honestly there's no obvious synergy of a bumblebee deck i don't think they're the best free cards whereas if we look at something like prowl prowl has a really nice skill that i think an awful lot of people are going to want to use an awful lot of the time giving your cars bold too when you flip to this mode or if you're in bot mode prowl has a similarly good skill whereby if one of your cars gets ko'd you can heal free from one of your other characters. So essentially Prowl has to work in a cars deck. And Prowl has a better skill for cars generally than any of the Bumblebee do. So even though you can play an all Bumblebee deck. I'm not sure you'd want to. Once you've got your characters, you need to make a deck of 40 plus battle cards. And the theory here is very simple. You want to try and make sure that you fit the theme of your deck. Now we have upgrades and we have actions. You can play one upgrade and one action per turn. So a general starting point is that you want to play 20 actions and 20 upgrades. Because an even amount means you should be able to play an action and an upgrade every turn. But then we look at things like Megatron Living Weapon, which can essentially have free weapons rather than a weapon an armor and a utility generally you can have one of each of the three types of upgrades on your transformer here you can have three weapons on megatron and actually maybe you want to go a bit heavier on the upgrade so you can take advantage of that or maybe you're using the rare optimus prime we did a video about that i believe it was yesterday so do please check that one out in the description. I've put a link to all my videos in the description. The thing is, this one's got a great skill, whereby when you're flipping cards for uh, attacking, you can play an action that you flipped. So clearly, Optimus Prime loves actions. And like I laid out in my video yesterday, you're probably going to build a deck with many more actions. So 20 actions, 20 upgrades, general rule, but it all comes from the characters. That's a big theme of this video. So if we go back to Nemesis, Nemesis wants to roll through your deck very, 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 very quickly. So you want a whole bunch of cards that draw cards, have white icons letting you flip more cards when you attack and defend, and have bold or tough letting you flip more cards when you attack or defend. So a card like Equipment Enthusiast here has a white icon and lets you draw a card for each of your upgrades. Clearly in a Nemesis Prime deck, this is going to be amazing. Whereas in an Optimus Prime deck where you're using a bunch of actions, maybe not so much. Although the white icon still makes it a good card and it's still decent draw power. If we continue with Nemesis Prime for the moment, we can look at two seemingly similar cards. Supercharge gives one of your characters bold free until the end of the turn, whereas Leap into Battle gives you plus free attack. Now the plus free attack is fine, but in Nemesis Prime you want to run through your deck as fast as you can, so bold to flip over more cards does that, so you would definitely want to go Supercharge to get the extra bold. Shockwave, we talked about making your opponent discard cards from their hand. So what you really want to do here is focus on cards like Security Checkpoint that make them discard cards from their hand. Or maybe you want to go and play System Reboot, which makes both players discard their hand and draw four cards. Now, if you're going for themed decks after a particular type of character, these all actually have cards which are very specific to them. So Dinobots get to take advantage of the previously mentioned Dino Chomp, and they also get Jaws of Steel here, which is a nice little upgrade card that gives you bold two but goes in the utility slot, whereas Flamethrower gives you bold two but that goes in the weapon slot. Dinobots can have both of them. So if you're doing a Dinobot and you want to go bold, you could play the pair of those. Cars have got Start Your Engines, Turbo Boosters, and Team Up Tactics. Insecticons get Swarm and Bug Bomb. And then you get things like Optimus Prime that gets Ion Blaster of Optimus Prime. It's really good, but can only be attached to Optimus Prime. Matrix of Leadership that can only be attached to an Autobot Leader, which Prime is. 
and cargo trailer, which is an interesting little upgrade, which gives you plus one attack, but only to a truck. And oh yeah, you can have three of them in the utility slot. So if you're going after a themed deck, you really want to make sure that all the Transformers fit that theme and that you're playing the action cards and the upgrade cards that fit that theme. But all the way through here, we need to remember that some cards are just better than others. Rapid Conversion is a redonkulous card that lets you flip one of your Transformers into its other mode. And there's so many skills that activate upon flipping that Rapid Conversion, plus it's got the white icon to help you when you're attacking or defending, seems like a free of in every deck. Grenade Launcher only stays on for one attack. But Grenade Launcher gives you plus four attack, which is way better than anything else, which means you've basically got to play it. And Force Field, I'm not making any deck without free Force Field from now until it rotates, if there ever is a rotation. Hopefully, because that means the game's been going for years. It's got a white icon and it guarantees that you can only take four damage. I think it's over the top great. So there are some cards you will find yourself popping into every deck. I'll give you one more example. Incoming Transmission, drawing two cards is good, but you also then, afterwards, get to put a card from your hand on top of your deck. So that's really, really handy because it means you can guarantee you get the icon you want when you flip to either attack or defend. Speaking of icons, there is no hard and fast rule. Some people have suggested you want to go 15 orange, 15 blue, 10 white, and that seems like a decent starting point. But as always, it depends on the deck. Sometimes you're going to be hampered a little bit because you're going to want a certain amount of each color icon, and you're going to want certain action and upgrade cards, and they might not match up in the way you want them to, in which case, sorry about that. Similarly, if you want to go for a really aggressive deck, you want orange icons, and as a side note, there's only two cards that have double orange icons. It is Improvised Shield, not a great card, but it's got double orange icons, and Peace Through Tyranny. So if you're going for orange icons, you've got to play both of those. And there are two cards that have double blue, an action, and an upgrade. The upgrade is Handheld Blaster which gives you a bit of the old bold one while having two blue icons. And the action card is Security Checkpoint, the one we mentioned earlier. So if you're playing a defensive deck and you want the blue icons, you kind of got to max out those two cards. I should remind you at this stage that a playset in this game is free, whereas in most card games it tends to be four. But then again, if you're somebody like Nemesis Prime that's trying to draw as many cards as you can and run through your deck as fast as you can, you are going to want as many white icons as you possibly can. Similarly, Optimus Prime, you really want to flip over a good action when you attack. So the more white icons you play, the greater chance you'll hit one while attacking and the greater chance you'll have a good action that you can then go and play. If you want to go by the 15, 15, 10 rule, that's fine, but you do need to work it out for the deck. And the most important rule of deck building is you got to play test. If you find that you're not doing enough damage, add in orange icons, add in bold. If you find that your defense isn't high enough, add in blue icons and tough. If you keep getting one hit KO'd by powerful characters, make sure you've got free force field in your deck. If you're not drawing enough, try using stuff like Equipment Enthusiast or Incoming Transmission. When you've got a deck together, you want to play as many games as you can, and you will find as you play, I'm not drawing enough cards. I've got an action to play every turn, but I don't have enough upgrades to play. I'm constantly not doing enough damage, and you can fix all of those in the way that we've set. It is super unlikely you're going to make the perfect deck first time round, and that's okay. But with playtesting and practice, you will get there. The other reason I cannot just tell you how to make a deck is because people have different play styles. No matter what card game I play, I go hyper-aggressive. You ain't going to find me playing many decks with tough. My theory is, ah, whack free force field in, that'll help you survive a couple of hits, and then go aggro. But that's just me. You may find yourself playing a little bit differently. Either way, if you've got any questions about deck building, do please chuck them in the comment section, and either I will answer them or a lovely person 
that watches this will answer. And if you think you're pretty good at this now, do please check the comments, see if you can answer some of the lovely questions down there. Otherwise, make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel for more Transformers and other content coming soon. And do make sure you're following on Twitter at the Wossy, where I'm going to be rambling. But by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wossy Plays.